тук. Така, а сега, последната ми презентация за деня е относно големите промени, когато става въпрос за много данни и много инфраструктура. Какво ли ще е да подпъхнете някакъв критичен компонент в някакъв пайплайн или система, която вече работи по някакъв много добър или едвам закрепен начин? За Apache Beam, една много интересна фасада върху а, множество технологии, ще ви разкаже Валери Цолов от Limpoam. Вашите аплодисменти. So, hi all. I'm Valery Tsov and I work as a back-end engineer at Limpoam. Uh, there I'm mainly engaged with the data ingestion pipelines. Uh, in a nutshell, our pipeline includes an API which is sending us 22 billion events per day. Then these events are grouped and transformed into, a, into sessions. And finally, these sessions are then compressed and ingested into our, into our storage, resulting in four terabytes new data every day. I have also participated in several big changes uh, in our data processing pipeline, uh, especially in the part uh, with the transformation from events to sessions, and then the ingest part from sessions to our storage. In this presentation, I'm going to share with you um, one of our testing strategies that guarded us from data corruption and data loss. So first of all, I want to give a brief general overview of what is big data and what is motivation for testing in big data. Uh, after that, we are going to look at a very simple and concrete scenario with its testing challenges. We are going to see how Apache Beam work and how it can help us solving these challenges. So what is big data? Big data refers to data sets that are too large or too complex for traditional data processing software to deal with. This includes capturing data, data analysis, search, sharing, transfer, and so on. Big data, with all of its applications, affects many aspects of our lives. These include social media, like Facebook, Twitter, and so on. Marketing, every one of us is part of very personalized, targeted marketing and advertising campaigns. Data for what we buy and what we read is collected by providers like Amazon. On top of that, data is collected also for our personal health and wealth. Heart rate and other statistics are for our everyday activities are collected and sent for analysis. And regarding our per personal finances, well, all budgeting apps might collect the data on what do we spend our money on. And because of these applications, we are seeing a true exponential growth of the collected data. Look at this graph, which shows us a prediction made by Oracle in 2012. It predicts that in 2020, 45 zettabytes of data will be circulating around the world. Can you imagine this? The greater volume of the data collected, the greater responsibility is put on the teams working with this data. Testing becomes one of the main challenges in big data because we don't want to introduce any data corruption, we don't want to have data loss, and we don't want to be in a situation like this one. That's why we need solid testing of our big data modules. So let's now focus on a more concrete and simple scenario. I would say even slightly artificial one. Imagine we decided to write a game, a multiplayer shooting game. Players participated in a team, and their individual score is equal to the number of killed enemies. We want also to collect statistics for each of our users when were their battles, which team they participated in, and what were their score on these battles. 
The typical approach here is including an API, which is receiving data and which is passing it to the data processing pipeline. The processing pipeline will execute some transformations over it, and at the end, we'll write the result to some storage. In our example, the processing pipeline will just assign a shard or bucket of the user and we are going to use Cassandra for a stor storage solution. We also decided to keep all the records in a single shard or bucket sorted by the timestamp of the battle, so we can easily get a list of the battles in certain period of time. As is, at the beginning, our, uh, as the volume of our data is not big, uh, we guard ourselves by an integration test which runs two Cassandra instances in memory, one preloaded with the right data and one with produced by the test pipeline. Also, we have a class containing our business logic for comparing data located on a certain shard in both databases. This is the compare two shards class. So everything went well, we released the game and everything worked fine. After some period of time, it has become very popular, and given that architecture and the growth of our client base, we figured out that our data processing pipeline is either slow by causing us delay data, or it's not reliable enough causing us frequent outages and data loss, or it's just too expensive to run at this scale. That's why we want to change some of the modules from the data processing pipeline. And we started asking ourselves, how are we going to verify that the data produced by the new module is consistent at this scale? We don't have much time, so we want to find a way to do our tests without writing complex code for optimal distribution of the tasks between worker machines and consequently merging of the results. And we start dreaming. If only there was a hardware that scales vertically infinitely, then probably we can solve our problem using plain Java streams, like this one. But certainly we don't have such still. So for this tough task, Apache Beam can help us. So how many of you have ever heard or used MapReduce framework? OK, so quite many. So well, Apache Beam is the latest stage of the evolution of big data processing technologies created by Google, which was started with the MapReduce framework. More concretely, Apache Beam is a unified module for defining both batch and stream data processing pipelines. Using one of the Beam SDKs, you can write a program that defines the pipeline, and after that, this pipeline will be executed by one of Beam's supported distributed processing backends, like Apache Flink or Apache Spark or Google Cloud Dateful. Apache Beam is also particularly useful for the so-called embarrassingly parallel data processing tasks, in which the problem can be decomposed into many smaller bundles of data that can be processed independently and in parallel. But what this means to us? Well, with our data decision to group users in shards, we are presented with an embarrassingly parallel task. We are going to create a bad job, which input is a sequence of numbers representing each individual shard. All we want is each worker to execute the compare to shards class functionality for the specific shard against both Cassandra clusters. We will let Beam fully handle the distribution of work and merging of the results. So before proceeding with the demo, I want to illustrate what we are 
going to try to do. So I've already generated data in the format chart, username, timestamp, team, and score, and have written one and the same data in both Cassandra clusters. I'm going to introduce a data loss by deleting a random row in Cassandra. And then we'll proceed with the implementation of our target test solution using Beam. So let's start with the demo. So I've walked in in the Cassandra actual cluster. You can see it up here with the small letters. And I prepare a sheet with the commands. So we are going to delete some random row from the Cassandra uh, table. So from, let's say, the 13th chart. Okay, we are going to take this one. Give me a second to prepare my query for deletion. Okay. Score. Okay, so let's execute this command against our Cassandra. Cool, now we have a data loss. And then I will start the pipeline as it is expected to take some time because machines should be spinned off and also shut down. So this is the command for um, starting an Apache Beam uh, pipeline. What, what it includes, basically this is a Maven command uh, we are doing an exec Java on this main class, validate pipeline. I'll uh, shortly show you which one is this. Then we have uh, some execution arguments, like in which project in Google Cloud Platform will be deployed. Uh, we also have the worker machine type. So this is, these are standard for core machines with uh, disk size 50 gigabytes and we have 10 such workers. Uh, we also, in order to validate uh, the data against both clusters, we need to pass some Cassandra contact points for both clusters, and these, one, these parameters are for this one. Finally, we are specifying the runner, so I've chosen the dateful runner as it's the most mature and easy to set up now. So let's run this command. Okay, so while we are waiting for this pipeline to finish, we can go through the code. Uh, where? <laughs> okay. Um, so this is, uh, let me make it bigger. So this is the code for our Apache Beam pipeline. How it does starts? Well, basically these rows are some boiler, boilerplate. Uh, they are defining the pipeline options, which includes in them the Cassandra contact points and also the configuration where it should be deployed, for example, on how many machines, what type of machines we are going to use, and so on. Then we are going to define our input. So our input is defined as following. We are creating a list of integers between zero and max the number of charts. Then, then it follows four lines. These four lines are really Apache Beam specific one. So the pipeline object is the object that holds all of the pipeline transformations 
as input, output, and medium transformations. It is created with these options that we create so that each worker can receive a copy of these options. And now we are at the pipeline. How we can define the pipeline input? So there are uh, root transformations like create and treat. The create transformation is taking as an argument a pbegin. pbegin object is just showing the pipeline begin. So, and it's returning a p collection. So what is a p collection? p collection is the, uh, I can make a comparison with Java 8 streams. So basically, in Java 8 streams, all operations, non-terminal, are returning a stream. And in Apache Beam, all non-terminal operations are returning a p-collection. P-collection is actually uh, coming from parallel collection, and it's immutable. It's an immutable one. All transformations has as, a, as input a p-collection and as output, again, a p-collection. So this creative input shards will create a p-collection of integers. Then we want these, p these integers to be parallelized and uh, give to several workers. So how can we do this in Apache Beam? Well, there is, a, again, a transformation which is called par do. Again, coming from parallel do. This transformation is the main, the core element-wise transformation that is used in Apache Beam. You can imagine that in, in this transformation, you can achieve uh, functionality like in the mapper or the reducer in the MapReduce framework. It, uh, it takes as an argument a user invoking function. This user invoking function is taking, again, as its input uh, p collection of integers and it produces a p collection of strings. And what is doing this function in our case? So we need to compare both clusters, both Cassandra clusters. So in each worker, we need to have information and connection to our Cassandra clusters. These, these are two lines. Uh, we also don't want any uh, resource leaks, so we are doing, uh, we are opening connections only once per worker uh, with the start bundle method and with the finish bundle, we are closing these resources, resources appropriately. Uh, the center of our user invoking function is actually the process element function, which is taking as an argument the process context. A process context is uh, holding uh, a reference to our input element where the output should be and to some more complicated stuff like what is the watermark of the elements what, in which window is this element, and so on. So we are going to take our input, this is the shard, we are going to call our compare to shards class here, and finally, we have defined a certain uh, counter that will show how, num how many battles we have checked in. So this is our user invoking function. And now let's see what it left. So at this point, we have a p collection of strings. This is the result. And we want to output it somewhere. So Apache Beam has a lot of uh, built-in functionality to write to many syncs and to read from many sources. So we can use the text.io narrative to write to GCS 
the Google Cloud Storage system a certain file with the result. So this is uh, the whole code for this one. Let, let me check if our PowerPoint has finished. So this is the, um, uh, the dashboard of the GCP, the Google Cloud Platform, and this is our data for all jobs. So it's still running. Okay. Uh, in order to, so the example was quite simple, and I want to assure you that we are using Apache Beam in our production pipelines. So while we are waiting for this, I hope it will finish, um, let me explain you um, and show you one of our production pipelines which is running here. So this is the main data ingestion pipeline, which is receiving our session walks, our session events. So how it works and what is shown here on this dashboard. First of all, this is the execution graph of, the, of our pipeline. It consists of many transforms, as you can see, and again, we are writing in Cassandra. So what is the volume of this pipeline? Well, basically, if you click on the step, you can see uh, what is the step name, what is the uh, system work. This is the element that was last read, how old it is. And we can also see output collections. So we we read from PubSub, uh, this is a message queue, imagine, um, three terabytes of data. And this is actually a compressed data, so after decompressing it, you can see that the output of uh, our transformation for decompressing data is 15 terabytes. So we are doing a lot of stuff here. So we are boxing into uh, Cassandra role specifics, and then we are doing windowing. What about windowing? Well, this provides us with the functionality to separate all of our elements in windows. Here we group all of our elements in 30 seconds windows. Then we group them by key in order to be easier to write them in our Cassandra cluster with batch statements. And this is whole pipeline. So let us see again if it finished. I'm not sure why it doesn't finish. But either way, we can proceed with the presentation and Q&A, and after that, we can see again if, um, if, it, it, if it has finished. So lastly, I want to mention, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, just a second, okay. Uh, lastly, I want to mention that we decided to uh, go fully open source. So uh, we, with a deployment on Flink, uh, we have experimented a lot with such a deployment and from our benchmarks, it seems that uh, it performs as good as the native Dataflow runner in terms of speed and accuracy. In order, if you want to receive more details on our deployment with Flink, you can stay tuned with our product development Facebook page on which we are going to make a blog post with the, uh, once we productionize our deployment. So, thank you.
Are there any questions? Okay. So now we can again see if it's finished. <laughs> Fingers crossed. No. <laughs> Maybe after five minutes. <laughs> oh, just two workers are working now. All of the other workers have finished their work. Hmm. Okay. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>